This video is about the cell-mediate immunity or intracellular specific immunity. Let's start inside a antigen-presenting cell. The blue-colored MHC class II molecule, which was generated in the endoplasmic reticulum, is flowing through the cell contained in a vesicle. Between its alpha and beta chain lies the binding site for the antigen that will be presented. Coming fresh from the ER, the binding site on this MHC2 molecule is still blocked by a clip molecule. This is a fail-safe system preventing the MHC2 from binding to a peptide chain or unfolded protein while still within the endoplasmatic reticulum. The clip molecule is the red part in the animation. As the professional APC engulfs foreign particles, they get broken down into their polypeptide chains. This process is known as phagocytosis. Greek phagein means devar and cytosis stands for a process being carried out by a cell. As the MHC2 molecule encounters these foreign peptide chains, it is yet unable to bind to them. The clip protein still blocks its binding site. The clip molecule first has to be removed by a HLADM molecule, also present in these vesicles. HLADM mimics the shape of the MHC2 molecule, causing the clip molecule to leave the MHC2 molecule and bind to the HLAMD. The HLAMD is represented by the olive red symbol. Now that the MHC2 is able to bind to the polypeptides, it will do so and then travel to the surface and start presenting this antigen. Some information about the MHC class II molecule. MHC stands for Major Histocompatibility Complex. These are presenter molecules that consist out of two peptide chains, the alpha and beta chain, in between which the binding site for the antigen that will be presented lies. Only professional antigen presenting cells or professional APCs, such as dendritic cells, macrophages, and in some rare cases B cells, as well as specialized epithelial cells, have these MHC2 molecules. When an antigen is presented along with an MHC2 molecule, the quote unquote message sent to the T cell is this antigen is part of a pathogen that was just phagocytosed. The cells that respond to this antigen should be activated. This process of activation is what we're going to look at next. Once activated, the professional antigen presenting cell will migrate from the site of infection to the lymph node. There are several different kinds of T lymphocytes. For the purpose of this video, we will focus on two major groups, CD4 plus T lymphocytes and CD8 plus T lymphocytes. Both kinds are equipped with a TCR or T cell receptor molecule. The TCR is specific to a group of antigens. It will only bind if it matches the antigen presented. If the TCR matches to the presented antigen, a signal is being released. The CD3 molecule seen, on the, seen to the left and right of the TCR will enhance the signal. Simultaneously, the CD4 molecule on CD4 plus T lymphocytes, or respectively the CD8 molecule in CD8 plus T lymphocytes, generates a second signal that will enhance the first signal. Once this signal has been confirmed through co-simulation, the cell will be activated. Prior to this activation, the lymphocytes are described as being naive, meaning that they were not activated before. After this process, the cell will proliferate and in the case of CD4 plus lymphocytes produce T helper cells, and in the case of CD8 plus cells, cytotoxic T cells. Let's take a closer look at the activation of a CD4 plus T lymphocyte. On the left side, we see our old friend, the APC, presenting its antigen, in this case the yellow circle, along with the MHC class II molecule. Superior to that, we see co-stimulatory surface molecules on the APC. These will become important later on. On the surface of the naive CD4 plus T lymphocyte, there are the TCR in red and orange, the CD3 in light olive green, the CD4 molecule in dark moss green, and pink co-stimulatory receiver molecules. The TCR creates a stimulus that gets amplified by the CD3 molecules. Simultaneously, the CD4 molecule interacts, amplifying the signal sent by the TCR. This first step is called recognition. It results in the creation of the so-called signal 1 of T-cell activation. As previously mentioned, this signal 1 is not enough to activate a naive T-cell, even though it very well be enough to reactivate a T-cell that was once activated and then entered a passive mode. The second signal, known as signal 2 of T-cell activation, is where co-stimulatory molecules come into play. This step is also known as co-stimulation. The APC has B7.1 molecules, here turquoise, 
and B7.2 molecules here dark olive. These interact with the CD28 molecules on the T cell here in purple, creating the signal 2 of T cell activation. These two signals together activate the cell, transforming the biochemical stimulus into a change in genetics, causing the T cells to proliferate and mature. There are three different types of T helper cells a CD4 plus T lymphocyte can mature into. Effector T helper will secrete cytokines, which are molecules that serve as communication utility, as well as proteins and polypeptides that will stimulate and interact with other leukocytes. For example, they will secrete interferon gamma and interleukin 2. These are, two, these are cytokines that will activate and maximize the, maximize the efficiency of macrophages and dendritic cells. Memory T cells will enter a passive mode, still retaining the antigen affinity. They are stored in case of a later infection with the same antigen. During their reactivation, they just have to undergo recognition. Co-stimulation is not required for their reactivation. Regulatory T cells, unlike the other kinds, will not activate and enhance the immune response, but they will regulate the immune response down. This prevents the immune system from overreacting and destroying the own body. Even though their number is relatively low, they have been linked to preventing autoimmune diseases. So far, we have merely been talking about the case in which a professional antigen-presenting cell phagocytosed a pathogen and presented it on its surface along with the MHC2 complex. But what happens in the case of a cell that is infected and used as a virus factory? This is where the CD8 plus T lymphocytes come into play. These cells differ from the CD4 plus cells by their surface molecules. The CD4 plus cells have CD4 molecules, whereas the CD8 plus have CD8 molecules. In the beginning, these cells are present in their naive, inactive form. The activation process is similar to that of a CD4 plus T lymphocyte. These cells have to undergo recognition and co-stimulation in order to be activated. Once activated, though, the CD8 plus T lymphocytes will proliferate and mature into cytotoxic T cells as well as memory T cells. So once the cell is infected and used as a virus factory, the pathogen, in this case a virus, will utilize the cell to fabricate more viruses. The viruses are green in this animation. As a byproduct of this process, there will be foreign pr proteins present, here yellow, that are leftovers from virus fabrication. These are sent to the endoplasmic reticulum, here in purple, in order to get broken down and recycled. In this endoplasmic reticulum, there are MHC1 class molecules. These molecules are present in all nucleated cells, so every cell except for erythrocytes and platelets. These MHC1 molecules constantly take peptide chains from the ER and present them on the cell surface. As long as the cell functions normally, there will only be naturally occurring peptide chains present in the endoplasmic reticulum. If the cell is infected, though, suddenly there will be foreign virus peptides present within the endoplasmic reticulum. These will also be presented on the surface. Thus, if an antigen is presented along with an MHC1 molecule, that means that this antigen is part of a virus and this virus is reproducing within the cell. Cytotoxic T cells will bind to these MHC1 molecules with the antigen if they have the right T cell receptor that matches the presented antigen. There are no matching TCRs for body owned peptides, so cytotoxic T cells won't interact with those. But foreign antigens presented along with the MHC1 will cause the cytotoxic T cell with the matching TCR to bind. This binding process consists as the activation process of recognition and co stimulation. The TCR creates the first stimulus that gets enhanced by the CD3 cells and by the CD8 here in moss green reacting with the MHC1 molecule. Co-stimulation works the same way as it does during activation. The B7.1 and B7.2 molecules on the, on the infected cell stimulate the CD28 molecule on the T cell. Once these two signals are sent, the fate of the infected cell is sealed. Perforin, here orange, is being released, creating pores in the cell membrane. Through these holes, granzymes here in pink can move into the cell, starting a biochemical cascade that will lead to apoptosis, the cell's self-destruction mechanism. The destroyed cell will expose the pathogens that were produced inside the cell to the outside, where antibodies and phagocytes deal with them. This video ends where it started, inside a phagocyte. Thanks for watching.